in a way, single-handedly, in Parliament has led the charge on this. You've been shunned by people, you've been taken off social media. I know the Shadow Secretary of State for Health said that you were an anti-science extremist, and yet you pursued with this case. Why? Well, we're not there yet, Esther. Thank you for, for that. Uh, because I know from first-hand experience and from all the emails that I've had that people have a few people have suffered really damaging consequences from having had the vaccines. And I'm afraid that the government has been and continues to be in denial about this, despite the fact that uh, the last couple of weeks we've had a few uh, payouts under the compensation scheme. Uh, to give you an example of how much the government is in denial, about three weeks ago I asked the Secretary of State whether he accepted that some people had died as a direct result of having COVID-19 vaccines. And I'm going to read out his answer. He said, I accept that the vaccine has not worked in the intended way for every single person. So in other words, he didn't accept uh, that uh, people had died as a result, although we've had coroner's inquests uh, confirming uh, just that. And he then offered to uh, meet me again to discuss this, but we can't get his office to agree a time when we can do that. So there is, although a few people have now been uh, in receipt of these uh, compensation payments, uh, there's a heck of a lot more work to be done. So given that these payments are happening, uh, Chris, e eventually, I suppose some people might say belatedly, um, what is it that you want to see happening that isn't happening, given that the payments are now being made? Well, I think that the payments themselves are not very high. Um, £120,000, that payment is the maximum, uh, and it hasn't been increased for um, many years and should be about 180000 if it was in line with inflation. But there's also an issue about the fact that you only qualify for a payment if you've been disabled to the extent of at least 60% and you have to prove on the balance of probabilities uh, that your disability was caused uh, by the vaccine. And it seems that the, the government is, is making life quite difficult for, for people uh, to be able to establish those uh, facts. So I've got my da vaccine damage bill coming back for a second reading on the, the 16th of uh, September, and I, that bill is basically asking the government to be a lot more flexible in the way in which it deals uh, with this issue. And it's interesting, this week, um, you quoted the Shadow Secretary of State for, for Health, but this week, a former Labour Secretary of State for Health, Andy Burnham, uh, wrote an article in which he said that when he was Secretary of State for Health, the line being taken in advising him in relation to uh, the damage uh, caused to people as a result of the contaminated blood scandal, that the advice was, oh, it's just a bit of hard luck. And he said, and I quote from this, he, sa he said that the government response to health scandals is driven by fear of financial exposure rather than uh, compassion. And I think that is sadly what's happening. And that's why uh, we in Parliament have got to keep pushing the government uh, to do the right thing. I guess that the, the compensation, uh, you know, as you say, doesn't necessarily cover either the heartbreak that's been caused or, in many cases, the financial cost of the ongoing uh, injury that's been caused. But I guess for many people, uh, and maybe even you, maybe the payment itself, though, is a vindication uh, that for some people, um, a minority of people, but some people nevertheless... The, the COVID vaccination has caused them immense damage. Is, is, that, is that vindication important in itself? I, th I think it is. Uh, and uh, the, the government needs now to start accepting publicly uh, that vaccines are not good news for everybody and that in order to improve vaccine confidence, they will ensure that they don't put barriers in the way of compensating people for whom the vaccine turns out to be very bad news and delivers them life-changing uh, consequences, adverse consequences, and which they have to live with for the rest of their lives.
there, Chris. I can understand that the government would pay money out because the government was telling people to uh, get uh, the vaccine. But how about the pharmaceutical companies who made the vaccines? Shouldn't they be paying out to people who've uh, suffered seriously or died? I think they should be. But, of course, the government indemnified those pharmaceutical companies uh, against any claims uh, of um, negligence. And I've been trying to get information about the terms of uh, that uh, arrangement between the government and these vaccine manufacturers. Again, the, the government says this is all confidential and, and can't be disclosed. But some people are now beginning to get to the stage when they think that they can bring a claim against um, the manufacturers or, in some cases, against the, the National Health uh, Service. I, mean, I think your um, GB News covered the case of Jack Hearn, whose inquest was heard about three weeks ago. Um, and he was a 26-year-old student who uh, died after receiving um, the wrong advice, basically, from the NHS about whether or not he should have an AstraZeneca vaccine. And he got blood clots and died from those. And the Birmingham coroner confirmed that um, mistakes had been made. So in a case like that, it, it may well be that the, the government's going to be sued for negligence on the part of the the health service. But you're right, the, the vaccine manufacturers themselves um, are now coming under the cosh, particularly in North America, because it seems that they covered up uh, some of the material which they received when they were carrying out uh, their trials. Christopher Chope, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning, and thank you for having the strength of character for pursuing the vaccine damages payout. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.